Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is October 8th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. So for this segment, I am going to talk about the IPCC special report that is in the process of coming out on the subject of 1.5 degrees Celsius warming and primarily focusing on why it's so important to try to limit global warming as much as possible and, and providing a, a factual, scientific, contextual basis for that scientific urging. But before I get into that, I just, I'd like to make a few just general statements. And, and one of them is that in the past, the way two degrees Celsius has been con contextualized is, is, is as if it's this line in the sand where beyond which everything is rather bad and before which everything is pretty much okay. And, and that contextualization, um, though it's easy to understand in, in human terms, it is not accurate. Climate change is, is, is literally a matter of shades and degrees. So, so the more you warm, the more shades of harm you end up with. You, you, you end up with a, another tick on the scale of, of worsening influences. And it's for this reason that I've been talking about the range of one to two degrees Celsius warming as a dangerous range. And, and there's all sorts of shades even along that scale that could be described further and understood further with that, with that being that you know, one degree Celsius warming is, is quite a bit different than two degrees Celsius warming or even 1.5 degrees Celsius warming. And that each 0.1 degree Celsius of additional warming is something that will feel on a global scale. The other bit of context I'd like to provide is that earlier response to human caused climate change is always better. And to this point, I'd just like to highlight a statement by Dr. Gavin Schmidt, who's the head of NASA GISS, who notes that the best time to start reducing emissions was 25 years ago. The second best time is today. And, and that's always the case. In any delay in responding to human caused climate change by reducing fossil fuel burning and reducing emissions ends up producing more harm in the end. And that's why now, which we can control, we can control now, is the best time to respond. All right, so let's get into the report a bit. Now, there's some interesting changes in this report versus other reports with regards to understood impacts of human-caused climate change based on warming in the range of 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. I'm not going to compare and contrast between the previous reports, but let's just simply state that some of the impacts are seen to, to be worse at two degrees Celsius than they were in previous reports. So, so, so various impacts at two degrees Celsius and 1.5 degrees Celsius are, are seen as, as being more harmful than was previously thought. What I am going to do is I'm going to go through a list of differences in impacts between 1.5 and two degrees Celsius under a scientific assessment based on this report to show you, one, how bad each one actually is, and two, how much less worse 1.5 degrees Celsius is than two degrees Celsius warming. Okay, so, so the science recognizes a big difference between 1.5 and two degrees Celsius warming. For example, Weather worsens, is understood to worsen with, according to the report, with each 0.5 degree Celsius of warming. In my opinion, it probably worsens with each 0.1 degree Celsius of warming. Extreme temperatures, uh, zones of extreme temperatures expand at 2 degrees Celsius warming versus 1.5 degrees Celsius warming. You have a, an increased 
frequency of extreme precipitation events at 2 degrees Celsius versus 1.5. You've got an increased frequency of droughts at 2 versus 1.5. You've got worse wildfires at 2 versus 1.5. 2 degrees is worse in pretty much every way. Risks to human health due to heat impact are, and food and water supply are all worse at 2 degrees versus 1.5 degrees Celsius warming. 1.5 degrees Celsius results in lower rates of sea level rise over decadal and century timescales. Impacts to biodiversity are about 50% less at 1.5 degrees Celsius versus 2 degrees Celsius, with twice as many species being, uh, approximately twice as many species or more being impacted at 2 degrees Celsius versus 1.5 degrees Celsius warming. Uh, between 1.5 to 2.5 million square kilometers of permafrost would be prevented from thawing if you kept warming just to 1.5 degrees Celsius versus 2 degrees Celsius. Ocean acidification, warming, and lowered oxygen content would be less at 1.5 degrees Celsius versus 2. And the chances for an ice-free ice Arctic Ocean conditions during various seasons would be considerably lower at 1.5 degrees Celsius versus 2 degrees Celsius. Coral reef losses, unfortunately, are expected to be bad at a 1.5 degrees Celsius warming range. Um, in, in the range of 70 to 90 percent of, of corals lost by 1.5 degrees Celsius warming. However, by 2 degrees Celsius, approximately 99 percent of corals would be lost. So really bad impacts to corals um, and, and, and related ocean health due to coral reef losses. And, and unfortunately, that, that's just one of the, the facts here that, that puts a very fine point on, on the fact that we really, really should have started reducing carbon emissions earlier, but reducing, reducing carbon emissions now can still save a lot of coral reefs. Impacts to fisheries are less, with the global catch being reduced by about 1.5 million tons per year at 1.5 degrees Celsius versus 3 million tons per year reduction at 2 degrees Celsius. And this butcher board goes on and on and on. I, I'm going to provide a link for you. I encourage you to read some, some of the information with respect to this report. So we've got about two minutes left and I just wanna show you a comparison uh, of the impacts associated with warming in the range of 1.5 to, to two degrees Celsius. So, so as we were talking about before, impacts to corals are still high at 1.5 degrees Celsius, but they're, they're terrible at two. And like mangroves, at present we don't see much impact, but we do expect to see some impact at, um, at two degrees Celsius. Uh, fisheries have already, we've experienced uh, some impact, but uh, get to 1.5 degrees Celsius, you have a moderate impact and getting into a high impact at two degrees Celsius. Arctic region impacts right now are low to moderate with moderate impacts expected at 1.5 and, and, and high and extreme impacts expected at two degrees Celsius. And, and you can just go on and on through these scales to see the, the market difference between 1.5 and 2 degrees Celsius warming. So it's very important to get into policies that, that start reducing carbon emissions and fossil fuel burning as soon as possible and, and to be as aggressive as possible because you, you really prevent a lot of harm. Uh, the way the report itself and the executive summary, summary is organized uh, talks about potentials to reduce warming first. I, I wanted to front load the impacts because that's really what we're talking about is, is preventing these impacts and, and lessening the blow from human caused climate change. Even though we're gonna get hit by a certain degree, we, we, we wanna soften the blow as much as possible. So thank you for joining me and I'll be chatting more about this report in another video.